Good afternoon everybody and welcome to our very first Instagram live game drive. We hope that you've had a blessed Easter, blessed Easter weekend and hope that you're all safe. Um, before we head out this afternoon I'd like to introduce some of us. My name is Trevor, Stewie up in the front there in the tracker roll and Brad's on the camera today so you may hear his voice every now and again if any of you are asking questions. <laughs> um, behind me a lot of our um, guests familiar guests and guests that uh, know this little spot on the sand river here this is what we call Kiri crossing um, on a hot afternoon like this we're going to start along the river which is always such a pretty drive um, we're going to work in two teams um, we have Tom Brandon and Ryan our other team that are out and about looking for animals and during this live um, cast we're going to be able to switch over so there may be a slight delay in the changeover but we will let you know um, in that way we're able to work as a team and, and find some more animals for you. Further behind me there's a very large sycamore fig that actually has quite quite a significant um, interest in this area and Stuart's going to tell you a little bit about that uh, tree. Well not only is it a magnificent tree, um, a sycamore fig, there's many different associations and uh, a lot of wildlife um, that will utilize this tree, um, baboons roosting in the tree, um, all your browsing antelope that might feed on the fruits that fall from it, um, even down to smaller levels where insects uh, associate and it is a particular host for certain wasp species. But in this particular region and over a significant amount of time, um, it's become a, a landmark. And so we actually refer to it as the post office tree and uh, back in the day you might find that people that were living out in these uh, more remote regions would rely on it in terms of having all of their uh, posts and parcels and messages and things being able to be distributed to the outlying areas so uh, outriders on horseback might come past here collect things that have been left behind or in turn leave things that have been brought in from outside and uh, it would be a significant landmark in the area used as a post office terminal uh, to spread messages and, and packages and whatever needed to be um, distributed further out. So this is our uh, landmark post office tree and a very favorite area on the tributary of uh, one of the significant uh, inflows to the Sand River, which we have down in front of us. Many of you know it, one of my favorites. All right, guys, we're going to head out. We're going to start looking for some animals and show you up in the front there while we're driving. We're going to chat between each other, what we're listening for while we're driving and, and putting our ideas and, and using our senses to find the different animals. So let's head out and have some fun. Driving along, Stuart's looking for tracks on the ground, listening for alarm calls, perhaps from birds or from other animals. So we're not only just using our eyes and hoping to bump into animals while we drive, we're smelling, we're listening. Stuart's got a multitask.
head there, it's a bit backlit. Got a group of impala, which are the most common antelope in this area. And it's a very interesting time of the year to see impala because they're going through what we call the rutting season. So this is when the females come into estrus and the males start to compete uh, for dominancy to mate with these females. So they make a sound that if you didn't know the sound, almost sounds like two predators having a fight. And we refer to that as a rutting sound, almost a roaring sound. And these are these males fighting and competing for dominance. We always want the dominant gene introduced. So during the month of April is our rutting season. The females will fall pregnant. And then in November, December, after generally a nine month gestation, and after the first rains, they'll start to give birth. In this group here, it looks like a batch, bachelor group of males, possibly younger males that haven't been able, that are not ready to fight or be dominant yet, and they'll form these unstable bachelor groups, purely for safety in numbers. But often, as we find through the later months of April into May, you'll find a dominant male with a group of females, and um, you'll know who the dominant one is. It's a, it's a big job, that. There's a young male in Pala there as well, possibly part of the bigger group within this area. Generally late afternoon, early evening, they start to head into sort of more of an open area to give themselves a chance to see a predator if there is one around. really really pretty spot just south of the river um, there's a bird flying across there called an African Gicana um, also nicknamed a lily trotter they'll often lay their eggs and nest on these reeds and on the lilies there they've got very long claws so they can balance on the lilies that's how they get the name the lily trotter also one of the only birds really that the male has to sit on the eggs and look after the youngsters um, which is more common with the females along the other side there there's a pair of woolly neck stalks and you may be wondering on the tree over there it almost looks like decorations off the off the center tree there that's the from the weaver birds that's their nests you can see they're quite dry now so they're finished in the finished breeding um, but those are the mast weaver nests where the males nest these um, weave these beautiful nests and the females come inspect them and decide if they're good enough to to nest in generally in a safe spot 
And in the background there, I'm not sure if you can see it, is a lovely big giraffe. They're busy strolling across there. We'll see, maybe she may come for a drink. There comes a big male. At distance, the difference between male and female giraffe, we refer to there what many people think is horns, is actually called an ossicone, which is a bone protrusion covered in fur. The males have more of a V-shaped uh, horn that are bald on top, and a female that sort of face inwards and are hairy on top. The main reason for the males is that it's for fighting. So if there's two males courting a female, often it leads to quite a nasty fight. We refer to it as necking. They stand very close together, swing their necks and butt each other. It's almost like watching two boxers um, fighting one another. Such elegant, beautiful animals. on the top of a tree there called the scented thorn. They like feeding on the acacia plants. It's one of their favorite diets there. Here she comes here along on, on the right hand side. She's quite pale in color compared to him. Generally giraffe get a little bit darker as they get older. But let's see what she's up to. focused on the stalks they just took off there you can see they're flying past her so what's quite interesting is that giraffe are actually silent they don't make any vocal sounds in terms of alarm call or calling one another so sight touch smell is their main way of communication and they refer to living in what we call a temporary association so a group together is just temporary there's numerous collective nouns like journey of giraffe which is quite often used but in actual fact a temporary association I think it's got to their silent got to do with their, their silent way of life. There goes the big male. Lovely dark colours on him. Mm. And even those prominent tips on the end of his horns are visible from here. best on the left hand side there. Stu was talking about their tracks. There's a good chance they drank there during the heat of the day and now possibly moving away from the water into the clearings. 